So I'm going to show you all of the dolls. But this is the doll that I'm going to show you how to make. And for her necklace, I just put enough pearls so that I could fit them over her head. So those are optional if you want to do, if you want to um, use those. And also, I put little pearls around her dress as well. So here you can see there's one layer. And then here is the second layer to the dress. And then here's the third layer. And then you have the pillow. And she actually sits on the pillow. And I made it so you can take her out so that um, she can also be played with and then put back when you're done. And then I just want to turn her around so you can see the back. She has beautiful hair. And you can see the roses that go all around the dress. And also I put little pearls that go around the dress. And then I went ahead and just left her outfit on because it just looks pretty for the top part of the dress. And then also she has a beautiful gold ribbon around her waist. And you can take her out because because I put buttons onto the back of the dress. And this is one of my grandmother's dolls, which was the inspiration for the doll that I made. And for hers, there, of course, I made some changes because I have to assume that she used a pattern for hers. So there are some differences that I did between the dresses, but you really, um, I made it really close, so they're very close. And for her, she actually sewed down the roses, the top dress, to the second dress, which I didn't do that. And also here she has a third layer. And then this is the pillow that I made for her because she was missing her pillow. And then also she doesn't have any feet. So she, my grandmother actually bought a doll, it looks like, and took the feet off. And I know they sell dolls where you just have the top portion specifically for this purpose just to make a bed doll. So it's up to you. If you prefer this style, I made the dress the same size. So you could actually use the dress that you make with my doll with one of these dolls too. And then these are the pearls that my grandmother put on her and they're the smaller pearls. And then I had to fix her hair so I put, she had smaller pearls in the hair but um, it broke so I had to put the bigger pearls in. And then she also has buttons on the back of her dress. And this is what she looks like from behind. And then I'm going to show you the other style doll. And here is the other style doll. She has beautiful red hair. And she um, didn't have anything in her hair, so I went ahead and made pearls for her hair. And I just want to show you from behind. She has a hood that goes over her head, which I'm going to put on to show you. Let me just go ahead and put that on. So I have to tuck her hair in. I'll just put that on and then I'll show you. So this is her hood from behind and you can see how she has a beautiful cape as well for her dress. And here the cape is actually detachable. You can see how she made that. And then around the front you can see how she tied a ribbon to hold the cape and the hat on. And then she's also attached by a button to the bottom of the pillow and then here you could see her bottom skirt and then this is her pillow that she has and then her bottom skirt and then the top one and then her roses are a little bit different on hers but she has roses all along the bottom of her dress as well So the doll that I used is Disney Princess and it's Toddler Belle. This is what she looks like when she's out of her gown and she, she can sit, which is what I like about her because some of the dolls I was looking at, they don't sit and her arms move. 
So I'm just going to show you how she sits on the pillow. So underneath the dress, this is how she sits on the pillow, and I just have a little strap that helps to hold her in. So for this project, I use my J or six millimeter crochet hook, and of course your pair of scissors, and I used two tapestry needles, a larger one that's easier just to thread the yarn by hand, and then my skinnier tapestry needle with a large eye where I can um, fit, the, fit the eye through a bead. And in order to thread the smaller tapestry needle, I use my DMC yarn threader that looks like this. The yarn that I chose for my project is from Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo and I used soft white, I used regular white, I used Erin. For the beautiful roses on my dress, I used Lion Brand Pound of Love and the color was Bubblegum. And for the rose leaves, I used the Red Heart Super Saver and it's the Patty Green. So I'm going to show you how I make the pearl necklace and the um, how I put them in the hair. And I use the 8 millimeter and white And I'm using pearl. these scrunchies. Just one of them. I'm using the pink color because it matches the flowers to hold the doll in place. I'm using Lamode buttons. And I'm using my tapestry needle with the small eye. So that means that I need my yarn threader to help because I'm going to use my yarn to sew these buttons on and this tapestry needle fits through the button nicely. I also use the Ofre ribbon and it's a really pretty gold, glittery gold ribbon and this one is a 1 8 inch in size. So now you can see the nice pillow on the front side and then here's the back and you have your buttons in place so you can remove the pillow if you need to. And if you don't like the buttons, you can just sew it all the way on. And then your pillow will just be a permanent part of the crochet work. Now you're going to take the top of the pillow and you're going to take your strap that holds the doll in and your tapestry needle and yarn. And you're just going to sew the edges, making sure not to sew it to the pillow. You just want to sew it to the top part of the pillow and this will just help hold the doll in and you can see how I positioned mine so here's the center of the top of the pillow and it's one two three four five six right around that area and then when it's flat down it's one two three then you're going to take a scrunchie if you want to have something secure around the doll's legs you can take and spread out the fabric portion and the elastic portion is right here and you're just going to take it into the center and you're just going to come up from the inside with your tapestry needle make sure you leave enough yarn end for burying into your work and then you're just going to sew the scrunchie in place. Just put a few stitches in there to make sure that the scrunchie stays in place. This way you'll be able to remove the doll if the child, your child wants to play with the doll and then you could put the doll back when the child's done playing. So you can see how I'm just kind of going in and out and sewing the scrunchie in place. Make sure you only sew the top and not the bottom because you want to be able to fit the doll's legs through the scrunchie. So go ahead, sew the scrunchie in place and then come back and we'll see how the doll looks sitting on the pillow. And here is the doll actually sitting on the pillow and you can see how it actually holds her when she sits her legs go a little bit apart so it helps to hold in the scrunchie 
to hold her in place and then she can slip in and out. Now for the top of the dress I'm using my Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo and this color is Erin. For the top of the dress we're going to start with a slip knot so you're going to fold your yarn over on itself to form a loop and then I'm using my J or six millimeter crochet hook and you're going to hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb and then you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot now you're going to do a chain of 30 and I'm just going to show you how to do four of them yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for one chain two three Four. So go ahead, finish the chain of 30, and then come back. Now we're going to move up to the second row. So you're going to hold that last stitch you made and then make a chain one. And then you're going to go into the second chain. Actually, it's going to be the third chain from the hook. So here you have one that you just made the one chain here and then the third chain from the hook go ahead and go into that chain and then you're going to bring up a loop two loops on the hook yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and then you're going to do a single crochet into every stitch all the way back across when you reach the other end come back and then I'll show you what to do next your work should look like this and now you're going to do a chain one and then turn your work so so far we've done two rows this is our third row and on this row you can see how you have a little bit of an upslope at the base of your chain one you're not going to work in this stitch you're going to work in the next stitch over so you're going to go into that next stitch you're going to bring up a loop two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet so go ahead finish doing a single crochet into every stitch back across so now I'm at the end and I just want to make sure that you know to work in all of your stitches so here you can see I have one two three stitches left so sometimes when you work a single crochet into this stitch it looks like you're done um, but you still have one stitch left so make sure that you work your single crochet into every stitch you can see how it looks like you're done but you still have that one last stitch and then you can chain one and now you're going to turn your work and now you're move, working on your fourth row so you're going to do that until you finish a total of six rows and then come back now you should have completed six rows of one single crochet into every stitch. Now we're going to make one side of the back. So you're going to chain one and then turn your work. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over and do a single crochet. And then you're going to do six stitches of one single crochet into each. So we've already done two. three, four, five, six. So now you're going to do a chain one, turn your work, go into the next stitch over and do a single crochet all the way back to the end and then come back. So I finished two rows I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and then I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to keep doing one single crochet into, into each stitch until I've completed four rows. So after you complete four rows, come back. Now you're going to go ahead and finish off. So yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And now you're going to do the same thing that you did on this side on the other side. 
So take your crochet hook and go into the very end stitch and you're going to grab the yarn and hook it through. Oop, that didn't hook very well. Technical difficulties, there we go. Now, you're just going to take and do a chain one. And tie a knot. And then go ahead and do one single crochet into the next stitch over. And you want to go across until you've completed six. And then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to complete four rows of one single crochet into every stitch just like you did on the other side and then come back. Now your work should look like this and we're going to make the center piece of the dress now so you're going to skip one stitch from the right and then put your crochet hook into that second stitch and then you're going to take and hook the yarn chain one and then you're going to take and tie a knot and we can bury our loose yarn in on this one because we're going to have a lot of loose yarn ends to bury so you're just going to take it the loose yarn in and we're going to work behind it but you're going to do a single crochet in the same stitch, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet, and then you're going to do a single crochet into every stitch across until you get to that last stitch. So one single crochet into every stitch across and I'm burying my loose yarn end as I'm working until I get to that last stitch and I buried the loose yarn end enough so I'm going to go ahead and just cut my loose yarn end get it out of the way so one more stitch and you can see how I have one stitch left on this row that's going to re remain unworked then I'm going to chain one, turn, and then I'm going to do a single crochet into the next stitch over, and then you're going to do a single crochet into every stitch back across, and then come back. Now you can see how the work looks, and we've completed two rows in the center, so you're going to do two more rows. So move up, to move up to the next row, you're just going to chain one, and then you're going to do a single crochet into every stitch back across. So go ahead and do one single crochet into every stitch across until you've completed a total of four rows. We've already done, this is our third row that I'm working on right now. So go ahead and finish doing four rows and then come back. Now after you've finished your fourth row, go ahead and yarn over to finish off.
And now we're going to make the arm or the sleeves. Now with your white yarn, you're going to take and fold the yarn over. We're going to do a slip knot. So you're going to yarn over and go through that loop for your slip knot. And now you're going to make a chain of 12. So now I have my chain of 12 and then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into that first chain that you made. Let's so go into that first chain that you made and then you're going to take and yarn over and you're going to do a slip knot. You're going to take the yarn and you're going to go through both loops on your hook for a slip knot and that creates the armhole. And now you're going to take your second color of the dress, the main color. We're going to change color now. So you're going to take and loop the new yarn and bring it through. And then you're going to chain one. Then you can tie a knot. And we're going to go ahead and cut the white colored yarn because we just want it for the decoration on the armhole and then you're just going to take and tie a knot and then we can go ahead let me just turn my work and I'm going to bury my loose yarn ends as I work. So I have all three loose yarn ends. And I'm going to go into the first stitch, go behind my loose yarn ends, and then I'm going to grab my new color, bring up a loop. Now I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then I'm going to do a single crochet all the way around and at the same time I'm burying my loose yarn ends so I'm just going right behind my loose yarn ends And I think that buried my loose yarn ends enough, so I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn ends. And then I'm just going to keep doing single crochet all the way around. And this is my last one. So now I'm going to do a slip stitch. So go into that first stitch that you made, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Now you're going to chain one. We're going to move up to the next row. This is our third row. And you're going to do a single crochet all the way around. until you get back to where you started. So this was my second row with the new color. And I'm going to go ahead and do a slip stitch. I'm back to where I started, so I'm going to do a slip stitch to my first stitch. And then I'm going to chain one to start on my third row. And it might be helpful to place a yarn marker just so you can keep track of where 
your first stitch was and you're going to keep doing one single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed five rows with your new color. So keep doing one single crochet and then slip stitching the end of the row and then start on your new row until you've completed five rows and then come back. So now I finished one, two, three, four, five rows. I'm going to take my yarn marker, place it right where I left off, and now you're going to do two single crochet into every stitch until you get back to the yarn marker. So two single crochet into every stitch around and then come back. Now do a slip stitch into that first stitch that you made and then chain one and then take your yarn marker and move it up. Now you're going to do one single crochet into every stitch around. Okay, so now you're going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch. And then take and move your yarn marker up. And now we're going to do decrease stitches. So you're going to take and go into that first stitch, bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease stitch. And you're just going to do decrease stitches all the way around until you get back to the yarn marker and then come back. I have one stitch left so I'm going to do a single crochet into that stitch and then I'm going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch And then you're going to do one single crochet, actually, let's do a single crochet to start the round. And then you're going to do one single crochet into every stitch around. back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to do a slip stitch and just finish off. And then you can see how it makes a beautiful little puff to the arm sleeve. And you need to now you're going to take the front part of the dress top and you're going to take your sleeve and make sure that you have the seam down and you're going to place the seam down onto the front like this and then take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and you're going to come in from the bottom from the back side with your tapestry needle and come through the inside of the sleeve. Make sure you leave enough yarn to tie a knot and bury the loose yarn ends when you're done. And then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to sew up the sides. So you're going to take and sew the sleeve, whoops, make sure I'm doing that, Come and sew the sleeve onto the side. My loose yarn ends getting in the way, just make sure they don't get in your way.
And then once you reach the top, you want to go back down because you want to sew on the other side. So you're just going to keep sewing the sleeve on. And now you're going to sew up the other side of the sleeve. And then you're just going to take and tie a knot when you get to the top of the other side. And then just cut a loose yarn in because you're going to bury that loose yarn in. And then you have one sleeve sewn on. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So now you should have both sleeves sewn on. And now you're going to take, this is the front side facing me, and you're going to take your corner and put your crochet hook into that stitch and you're using the same main color yarn you're going to hook it and bring it through that stitch and then you're going to chain one turn your work over and then just tie a knot And I'm going to bury these loose yarn ends as I work. So just take, there's two of them here. I'm going to do a single crochet into the same stitch behind the loose two, two loose yarn ends. Bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then I'm going to do a single crochet across to the sleeve. And I'm burying my loose yarn ends as I'm working. And then you're just going to crochet across the top of the sleeve. And now you know how to crochet across the top of the sleeve. So you're going to crochet one single crochet into every stitch all the way across, across the other sleeve, and across to the other side, and then come back. Okay, so you could see how I crocheted all the way across the top. And now we're going to change colors. So you're going to, um, I just did a single crochet into my last stitch, so I'm going to go ahead and join my white color, the same thing that I did for the ends of the sleeves, and just bring it right through the loop, and then chain one, and then turn your work over. You can take and cut your previous color and then tie a knot and now you're just going to do 
a chain one with your new color and then you're going to turn your work and I have three loose yarn ends that I'm going to bury as I work so I'm going to go into the next stitch I'm going to go behind those loose yarn ends I'm going to bring up a loop two loops on my hook yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and then I'm going to do a single crochet all the way across back to the other side and then come back. Then when you reach the other side you're just going to yarn over and then finish off. And then you can see how you have your pretty top and how it looks so far. Now to sew my buttons on I'm going to use this tapestry needle with the small eye and I'm just going to take my yarn threader and just put it right through the eye of the, ne of the tapestry needle and then I'm going to take my yarn and then I'm just going to take and um, get the hook back through the eye of the tapestry needle and just jiggle it up and down and that just brings it right through. And then you're just going to take your outfit and face it so that the back is facing you and I'm putting the buttons on this side so I'm just going to turn it and then I'm going to space the buttons the first button I'm going to put right below the white portion so I'm just going to take from the inside just come through with my yarn you can see how the yarn fits nicely through this buttonhole I really like that because it keeps it nice and sturdy so it won't come out you see how nicely that looks so go ahead and space your buttons and sew them on so that you have three of them and then come back so these are what my buttons look like now we're going to do our buttonholes so you're going to take the top of the opposite side and just put your crochet hook through that top stitch which is right below the white stitch so here's the white part of the top of the shirt and then just take the same colored yarn as the main color of your top and just hook it and bring it through make sure you leave enough loose yarn in for um, burying into your work and then just do a chain one and then you're going to tie a knot and then you're going to make a chain two one two and then you're going to do a single crochet skip a stitch and then do a single crochet and then you're going to do a single crochet into the next stitch and then chain two one two skip a stitch and then do a single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet into the next stitch then chain two one two skip a stitch and do a single crochet into the next stitch and then I have one last stitch at the bottom and then I'm just going to finish off and then you have your three buttonholes and just make sure that they work there's one two and three so I have my three buttonholes that work great and then here I'm just going to show you what my grandmother's what hers looked like so for her buttons she used just a clear one so if you like that button better you can pick this style 
of button. And then, of course, the dreaded burying of your loose yarn ends. Go ahead and take all of your loose yarn ends and just bury them into your work. And then I'll show you how to do the bottom skirt. Now for the bottom skirt, you're going to take this main colored yarn that you're using and just fold it over. We're going to do a slip knot. And just hold the base with your middle finger and thumb, and then yarn over for a slip knot. And now you're going to do a chain of 32. So I'm just going to show you four. Chain one, two, three, four. So go ahead and make a chain of 32 and then come back. After you make your chain of 32, you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into that first chain that you made. And we're going to do a slip knot. So you're just going to take and yarn over and pull the yarn, not a slip knot, a um, slip stitch. Yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to do a chain three. One, two, three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for this round. And we're going to do another double crochet into the same stitch. So just yarn over, go into the same stitch, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So yarn over, go into the next stitch over behind the loose yarn end because I'm just going to bury it. Bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then we're going to do two double crochets into every stitch around. So go ahead, finish doing two double crochet into every stitch around and then come back. So you should have finished two double crochet into every stitch around. Make sure that your work doesn't twist and then you're going to do a slip stitch into that top stitch of that first double crochet that you created. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to chain three for the next round and that's going to count as your first double crochet and then you're going to do another double crochet into the same stitch and you're going to do two double crochet into every stitch all the way around just like you did for the previous row so go ahead finish doing two double crochet into every stitch around I'm going to do one more with you. I'm doing two double crochet into every stitch around. And then come back. Okay, so now you're going to do a slip stitch into that top stitch of the first double crochet that you did. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And now you're going to do one double crochet into every stitch around. And you're going to do that for six rows. So one double crochet into every stitch around for six rows and then come back. You should have finished six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six of one double crochet into every stitch. And now on your last stitch, we're going to do a um, slip stitch into that first stitch on that first double crochet. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and finish off. So just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. If you're not going to do the beads, then you don't need to finish off. You can just keep um, continue crocheting with the same yarn. But since I'm adding beads, I'm going to go ahead and finish off and show you how I do that.
The first thing you're going to do is put your yarn on your tapestry needle. needle. You're going to need a thin tapestry needle to fit through the bead that has a large eye on it. And you're using your yarn threader and just put that right through the eye of your tapestry needle. And then you're going to hook your yarn and you're just going to bring the yarn, the hook back through the tapestry needle to bring the yarn through. And to get the thick yarn through, you just move your yarn threader up and down and then that'll bring it right through. And your yarn is still attached to your large roll. You don't want to cut it because you're going to feed the pearls on as you crochet. So now you can put your pearls on and how you do that is you just thread the pearls onto the tapestry needle and then you just push it right down onto the yarn. And you're going to thread all the pearls on that you think you're going to need to use on the dress. Because if you run out of pearls, then you're going to have to finish off and add more pearls to continue crocheting. So now I went ahead and pushed the pearls further down on my yarn. And just to give myself a little bit of crochet room, and I'm just going to take my end of the yarn and I'm going to join it where I left off on the dress. So I'm going to go into that first stitch with my crochet hook and I'm going to loop the yarn and bring it through. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a chain one and then I can tie a knot. And now, if you decided that you're, you weren't going to do the pearls, then you would just do, just start from here the same way. And the first thing I'm going to do is chain four. One, two, three, four. And that's going to count as your first treble crochet. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a pearl. So you just bring the pearl down and you can have some pearls closer too if you want so it's a little faster. And then you're going to do another treble crochet into the same stitch. So you're going to yarn over twice, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop. You have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Now, the thing to remember is when you're crocheting this way, this direction, that the pearl is going to lie on the opposite side. So just make sure that you have the, the right side showing that you want the pearl to be on. So now this is going to be my right side because the pearl is facing out in that direction. Now I'm going to do two treble crochet into the next stitch. So I'm going to yarn over twice, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to yarn over twice, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then every eighth treble crochet I'm going to add my pearl. So you can add your pearls however however long that you want to be apart from the distance between your pearls you can decide how far you want to space your pearls. But for mine I'm going to skip eight treble crochet and then place my pearl. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to do this first eight set to show you. So I'm going to do two 
treble crochet into every stitch And I'm going to keep moving my pearls down as I work and making sure that I have enough yarn to make my stitches. So I just finished a total of six. So this will be my eight. So here you can see how I have my pearl here. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on this next stitch, I'm going to place my pearl between the two treble crochet. And so you can see how my pearls are going to look on the dress. So like I said, the pearls are optional. So if you don't want to do the pearls, then you can just do your two treble crochets into every stitch around and then come back. I used 25 beads for my project and I spaced eight treble crochet in between each bead. When you finish your last treble crochet, you're going to do a slip stitch. So you're going to go into that top stitch right before the bead and you're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to do one chain and then do a single crochet into the same stitch and then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then you're going to go right, skip a stitch and go into that second stitch and do a single crochet. And this is optional. It's another design that you could put beneath the pearl. Or you can just finish off if you don't want to do this extra step. So for this extra step, you just chain three, one, two, three, skip a stitch, go into that second stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. And you can see how it makes a beautiful loop pattern at the bottom of the skirt. When you finish your last chain three, go ahead and do a slip stitch into that first single crochet that you made. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch and then yarn over and pull enough yarn through to finish off and bury your loose yarn in into your work. And this is how the bottom of the dress is going to look or the top part of this skirt. Okay, so now you can set this aside after you've buried all of your loose yarn ends and now we're going to start on the second part of the skirt. After you make your chain of 30, you're going to take your crochet hook and go into that first chain that you created. So we're going to form a circle. And then you're just going to do a slip stitch. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a slip stitch. And you can see how you make a nice circle. And then you're going to make a chain three. One, two, three. And that's going to count as your first double crochet. And now in the next stitch, you're going to do two double crochet into the same stitch.
And then in the next stitch, you're going to do one double crochet. And then in the second stitch, you're going to do two double crochet. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around and then come back. Okay, so now when you reach the first double crochet that you made, go ahead and do a slip stitch into that top stitch. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And you're going to get ready for your next round. So you're going to do one double crochet. This is going to count as your first double crochet in the first stitch. And then you're going to do a double crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to do two double crochet into the third stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. And then come back. And now go ahead and do your slip stitch. Chain three. And for this round, you're going to do, this is going to count as your first double crochet. Then you're going to do one double crochet into the second stitch. One double crochet into the third stitch. And then two double crochet into the fourth stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. Your work should be looking like this. And now you're going to do one double crochet into four stitches and then two double crochet into the fifth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around. Now you do one double crochet in five stitches and then two double crochet into the sixth stitch. And now you're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six stitches with just one double crochet and then two double crochet into the seventh stitch. Now this is my grandmother's dress and we've already finished the top part except for the flowers which we're going to come back to that and she also has a second and a third layer so right now we're working on this inner third layer and my grandmother used a different stitch and um, it looks like she used a half double crochet so if you want to use a half double crochet with the same method you can do that but um, I'm assuming that my grandmother used a pattern for her doll, so that's why I'm changing mine up a little bit. But it's going to have the same similar look, but it is going to be different. And for mine, I used the double crochet stitch. But you can see how you can do the same increasing pattern. And now I'm going to show you how to do this ruffle on the very inside but I just wanted to stop here because you're going to need to make two of these because you also need the middle layer dress. Now this middle layer is going to be a little bit longer but the um, it's made in a similar fashion so that's why I'm going to have you make two of these and then we will come back just after you make two of them just set one of them aside because we're going to come back to it. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and finish the innermost layer and show you how to complete that. So you should have made two of these exactly the same way. And go ahead and set your second one aside. And now we're going to continue with one of yours. And the first thing you're going to do is make a chain of four. One, two, three, Four. and we're going to do this counts as your first treble crochet and we're going to do another treble crochet into the same stitch so you're going to yarn over twice and then you're going to go into the same stitch bring up a loop four loops on the hook yarn over and go through two yarn over and go through two yarn over and go through two and then you're going to do a treble crochet two treble crochets into every stitch all the way around and you're going to do that for two rows, two rounds. So two rounds of two 
treble crochet into every stitch. So I'm going to do one more stitch with you. So I'm doing two treble crochets into the same stitch. And you're going to do that for two rounds and then I just back. wanted to say that on your second round of um, treble crochet, only do one treble crochet into every stitch instead of two. So on this first round, we're doing two treble crochet into every stitch. But when you work on the second round, you're just going to do one treble crochet into every stitch. So the first round, two treble crochet into every stitch. Your second round is going to be one treble crochet into every stitch. Now you're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch into your top stitch of your first treble crochet. So you can see how I made two treble crochet into every stitch on this row and then only one treble crochet for the second row. And now I'm going to change colors for, to do the rim of the skirt. And I'm using my bubblegum yarn color which is the same color as what I'm going to be using for the flowers. So you just take your yarn and you just hook the yarn and bring it through and then you're going to do a chain one and then just tie a knot. You can go ahead and cut the white yarn or the previous yarn that you were using because we're done with that color now. And now you're going to do a single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to do a chain four. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to skip the next stitch and do a single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. So chain four. skip a stitch, do a single crochet into the next stitch, and just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So now when you're all the way back to where you started, I have two stitches left. I'm going to do a slip stitch into, I'm going to skip a stitch, and then I'm going to do a slip stitch into that last stitch and meet up where I started. Just going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a slip stitch. There's a little gap on mine where I have the white yarn there. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch again into that first single crochet that I did. And that way I'll just slip stitch it together and hide that white portion of the yarn. And then I'm going to finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Pull it tight to form a knot. And now the middle skirt is completed. Go ahead and just bury all of your loose yarn ends. And then grab the other section that I told you about so we can work on the middle skirt. Now you're going to grab your second circle skirt that you've created. And you should be at the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 row and on this previous row you did one two three four five six one double crochet in every stitch and then two double crochet into the seventh stitch so now you're going to chain three one two three that's going to count as your first double crochet for this round and then you're going to do one double crochet into seven stitches And then two double crochet into the eighth stitch. And 
And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. And now you're going to do one double crochet into eight stitches and then two double crochets into the ninth stitch. So now you're going to do two more increase rows. And for your next row, you're going to do one double crochet into nine stitches and then two double crochet into your tenth stitch. And then when you're done with this round, go ahead and do your next round where you do one double crochet into 10 stitches and then two double crochet into the 11th stitch and then come back. So now you should have 10 rows and finished your last increase round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we're going to do our fringe. So you're going to do a chain four. One, two, three, four, and then that's going to count as your first treble crochet. And then you're going to do another treble crochet into the same stitch. So you're going to yarn over twice, and then go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So go ahead and do two treble crochets into every stitch around. Until you get back to the beginning. And then you're going to chain four and move up to the next round of treble crochets and do only one treble crochet into every stitch. So for this round, you're going to do two treble crochet into every stitch. Then you're going to move up to the next row and do one treble crochet into every stitch. Okay, so your work should look like this. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows for the main skirt. And then I have the row or round where I had two treble crochets into every stitch. And then the round with only one treble crochet into every stitch. And now we're going to change colors. So I'm going to do the main color of my um, dress, which was Erin. And I'm just going to take and hook the new colored yarn and bring it through the loop. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a chain one. So you yarn over and then go through that loop for a chain one. And then you can go ahead and just cut the previous colored yarn, which mine was white. And then I'm just going to tie a knot. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do a chain four. One, two, three, Four. That's going to count as my first treble crochet. And now I'm going to do a one treble crochet into every stitch around. And you're going to do that for two rounds. So two rounds of one treble crochet into every stitch and then come back. You should have finished two rows of the different color treble crochets. Now we're going to change colors. So you're going to take whatever color that you want for your border. I'm using my pink color again. I'm just going to hook the yarn and bring it through. And I'm going to do a chain one. And then I'm just going to turn my work. And you can go ahead and cut your previous colored yarn. We're not going to use that anymore. And make sure that you tie a knot. And now we're going to do a chain four. One, two, oh, actually, go ahead and go back to your regular loop because before you start, we're going to want to do a single crochet. So just go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. 
Then you can do a chain four. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to skip a stitch and work a single crochet into the next stitch. And then chain four. One, two, three, four. Skip a stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. And you can see how it creates a lovely little loop just like we've made before. So go ahead and do this all the way around the bottom edge. And then now when back. I reach the beginning stitch, I'm going to go ahead and go into that same stitch and I'm going to yarn over and just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then I'm going to finish off and just bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. And now you're going to take and figure out which side is going to be your right side and have it face you. Now you should have your right side up facing you and then this is my seam which is going to be along the back of the dress so I'm going to start at the seam and I'm going to go in right where the color change is and in the space between my two treble crochets and here is my seam on the other, other side of the crochet hook and I'm going to take my same, we're going to do the same thing we did on the end of the skirt along this color change. So you're just going to take your new color, bring up a loop, I'm going to yarn over to do a chain, and then just tie a knot. and then do a single crochet into the same stitch. So go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet, and then you're going to do a chain four, one, two, three, four, then you're going to skip a stitch, go in between the treble crochets, so actually I'm skipping two trebles, And then I'm bringing up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. Then chain four, one, two, three, four. And then you're going to skip two treble crochets. Bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, do a single crochet. And you can see how it's forming an, a cute little loop design. You're going to do that all the way around back to where you started. So now when you get back to the beginning you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to go into that first stitch that you made. You're going to yarn over and just pull the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to finish off. Just bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. And now you're going to go ahead and bury all of your loose yarn ends, but I just wanted to show you the pretty design that it makes for your dress. Now we're going to put the inner skirt, the innermost skirt on. So you're going to take the middle skirt, the one that we just finished the pretty design on, and make sure that you have it facing so that the wrong side is facing you. So you want the wrong side up. And then you're going to take your skirt and you want to also have the skirt have the wrong, the innermost skirt have the wrong side facing up so that the right side will show. So I have the wrong side facing up on both my innermost skirt and the middle skirt. And I'm going to line up the center circle. And then I'm going to take my tapestry needle, and since I used white for the inner part of the circle, I'm going to use my white yarn and my tapestry needle. And I'm going to start where I have my loose yarn end. If you don't have your loose yarn end and you buried it, you can just um, 
just start anywhere on the inner circle and you're going to grab a stitch from the middle skirt and a stitch from the inner skirt and we're going to sew them together so make sure you leave enough loose yarn end to tie a knot and then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and your yarn and you're just going to sew all the way around. You're going to sew these two pieces together. Just going around the circle and just sewing them together. And when you're done, go ahead and come back and I'll show you what to do next. So now you should have your inner skirt sewed on and now you can just turn everything over. So now the right side of the middle skirt is facing up and I'm going to sew on the top layer now. So for the top layer I'm going to be using the same colored yarn as my top layer. To sew so now on. I have the right side facing up on the middle layer and then I have the very top layer of the skirt facing up towards me. The pearls are showing and I'm going to line up the center the same way and I have my tapestry needle in the same colored yarn. I'm going to come up from the center and I'm just going to stitch the same way just stitch the top skirt part of the skirt on and make sure you leave enough loose yarn end and just sew everything together And then when you're finished sewing it together, come back and I'll show you how to sew the top on. Okay, so now I have the top part sewn on and I just wanted to show you that here is my seam. So I have my seam facing this way and I'm, the, the dress is right side up facing me. I have the pearls facing up and now you're going to take your top and I buttoned it up and here is the back of it and I'm going to line up the back with the seam the back seam so I have that lined up and then you're going to take and flip everything over making sure to hold this in place so now I have it flipped upside down and I have my shirt still holding on to my shirt and now you're going to sew the shirt on so just take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and you're just going to take and sew all the way around making sure that you can still unbutton your shirt Make sure you tie a knot too. I already tied one. This is still my leftover yarn from the front. So now I'm just going to go in and out the bottom stitch of the sh shirt from the front and then the innermost skirt. And I'm just sewing them together. So go ahead and sew the top part of your dress on and then come back and we'll see what the dress looks like. So here is the dress after you've sewn the pretty top on and then here is the back of the dress and now we're going to do the roses. So now to make the roses you're going to use whatever color that you want for your rose and we're going to do a slip knot. Go ahead and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop 
and I'm still using my J crochet hook. Hold the bottom of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. You're going to yarn over and pull through the loop for a slip knot. And then you're going to make a chain of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you're going to hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb. And then you're going to make a chain two for the next row. One, two. And that's going to count as your first half double crochet. And now you're going to do a half double crochet into the third chain from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding. Go ahead and yarn over. Go into the third chain from the hook. Bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over and go through all three for a half double crochet. And then you're going to do a half double crochet into every stitch all the way back across and then come back. Your work should look like this and then you can go ahead and finish off and make sure you pull enough yarn through to sew the rows onto your work. Okay, so here is the front of the top part of the dress and then here's the sleeve. You're going to take the side of the sleeve and we're going to sew our rows right here onto the sleeve. Go ahead and take your tapestry needle and put it on the long end that you left for sewing and make sure that you have the right side facing up. We want the side that has the two ridges facing up and then you're just going to lay it and then you're going to curl around your rows and then sew it in place. So you just take, make sure you don't sew the um, through to the other side of the sleeve. You only want the top part of the sleeve and then just gently sew your rows in place. Just go in and out. and then just gently sew your rows on and then come back. Now to make the leaves you're going to do the exact same thing that you did for the rows except you're going to start with a chain of five. So you're going to start with a chain of five and then you're going to hold that last stitch do chain two for your first half double crochet Yarn over, go into the third chain from the hook for your half double crochet. And then you're going to do a half double crochet all the way back. And then you're going to finish off. And then just make sure you pull enough yarn through to sew the leaf onto the below the rows. Now to place the leaf, go ahead and put your tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing. And then you're going to fold this in half. And then you're going to place it right under your rows. Make sure that when you're sewing it on the arm, that you still have the white part showing and then you're just going to take and sew down the green portion making sure not to sew the two, to, two sleeves together you just want the top part of the sleeve and then you just take and then just sew it on right beneath the rows and then just bury your loose yarn ends. So this is what my rose looks like on the one sleeve. And then on the inside, I buried all of my loose yarn ends. So I'm gonna place my roses the same way that my grandmother placed hers, one on each sleeve. So that's two 
and then she has three, four, five, six, seven, seven roses total, and the spacing between her roses on the skirt, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen stitches between hers. So you can place as many roses as you want, and I may place a little bit more, but um, I'll show you after I finish placing all the roses, I'll show you where all my roses are. Now this is my grandmother's doll, and um, she didn't have a pillow, so that's why I made her a pillow. And um, so I'm going to show you how my grandmother made the dolls is she actually took the legs off of her dolls. So you can see her doll here um, is missing its legs and they sell these too. So if you prefer this style you can just either buy a doll that you can um, take the legs off of or just buy the dolls that don't have the legs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew her to my pillow. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tie a piece of yarn around the bottom and then make sure I get it on there nice and tight and tie a knot. Now with her doll you can't put the yarn through the body because there's no hole. There's a hole on one side but the other side doesn't have a hole in there. Let me double check if I can get through. Yeah, there's no hole in there. If there is, then you can bring the yarn through there. But since mine doesn't have one, I'm just tying around. I just tied the yarn around the waist of the doll. And then I'm going to get my buttons. And I'm using these large crafting with buttons. And I'm using the beige one. And what I like about these buttons is my tapestry needle with the large eye can fit right through for when I sew it on. So now you're just going to take your doll and you're going to set her on the pillow. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to take the yarn and where you had the center of your magic circle on the pillow, I'm going to take my yarn and go right down the center of the magic circle and go through to the other side and I can take my doll off right now but take your tapestry needle squeeze your pillow and bring the tapestry needle through to the other side to the so bottom now I'm at the, the bottom of the pillow and I can bring the yarn through the bottom of the pillow and bring the doll down onto the top of the pillow and then I'm just going to pull snugly and I'm going to sew my button onto the pillow. So you can see how I'm just going in and out, taking little bits of the pillow and sewing the button in place and then just pulling the yarn snugly. And then I'm going to tie a knot and bury the loose yarn end. To bury my loose yarn end, I'm just going to go right underneath the button with my tapestry needle and then I'm just going to cut my loose yarn end and then you have your button holding the doll in place now she has her pillow and she's sitting on her pillow and you can lift her up and she's attached to the pillow so for her I fixed her hair a little bit and I also put new pearls into her hair. So I'm going to show you how to make pearls next. For the beads, I have to use my small, the thin tapestry needle with the large eye on it. So, and I also need my um, DMC yarn threader. So you just take your hook and just put it right through and then take whatever yarn that you're using to put the pearls on. I'm just using my soft white yarn and then just take your hook and bring it back through the eye of the tapestry needle and now the trick that I use to get the yarn, the thicker yarn to get through is I just jiggle the yarn threader up and down and then it just comes through real nice 
and then you can start putting your pearls onto so then the you just yarn. take your pearl and just take it on the tapestry needle and just bring down however many pearls that you want onto the yarn so I put 20 on for the one that I'm putting in the hair and then just make sure you leave long enough yarn ends that you can tie a knot and then we're going to put it in the doll's hair. So here I have the doll facing down because I'm going to take and um, wrap the pearls in her hair and then I'm going to tie the knot on the bottom. So I'm going to tie several knots So I tied about four, that way I can cut really close, careful not to cut the doll's hair. And then you have the pearls in the hair.